Hey guys, Arlesha here and welcome to another video. I am so very excited to finally be able to share this project with you guys. Because over the last couple of months, I have started experimenting with making my own watercolors. I started this project back in January-ish and wanted to wait until I could actually make a video to tell you guys about it. And so today I'm going to be mulling a color for you that I've made before and we're going to talk about the basics of the process. The basic composition of watercolors is pigment and binder. Today we're going to be mulling the color buff titanium which is PW6 colon 1. But before we get into it I want to talk to you a little bit about binder. All paints, whether they are acrylics, oil paints, watercolors, gouache, are basically composed of a pigment and a binder. For watercolors, the base of that binder is gum arabic. So I'm using a binder that I made myself, which is a mixture of gum arabic, distilled water, honey, and glycerin, basically. I think that's everything? Is that everything? I think so. Also to that mix here, you're seeing me add a few drops of synthetic oxgall, which is made by Core. It's the same thing they put into their paints to increase the flow of their watercolors. The color that we're gonna be mulling today, I wanted to start with something that comes together really nicely and really easily. So we're starting with buff titanium. I have mulled this color before, so I have already in my notes the ratios of how much binder to pigment I wanna use, and we'll talk more about that very soon. Oh my goodness, I feel like there were so many things that we had to jump into right away and I haven't really gotten to explain what I'm doing to you here. The basic idea behind making watercolors at home is just binding together the pigment and the binder. The pigment is already ground into a fine powder and my regular strength human hands aren't really going to be grinding that pigment any finer, the process that you're seeing here is just mulling. So I'm combining the pigment and the binder and just doing my best to evenly disperse the pigment within the binder. The reason you need this for paint is if I was to just take the pigment powder by itself and rub that all over a piece of paper as if I was painting with it, there would be nothing to encourage the pigment to stick to the paper or nothing really to make it paint, which is why you need a binder. For watercolors, like I said, that's gum arabic. Gum arabic is a water soluble substance, which is what allows it to be reactivated after it dries. I've also added honey and glycerin to my paints to make them re-wet easier and also to kind of keep them from cracking as all of that water evaporates and the paints dry in pans, which I'll be showing to you guys a little bit later. The other big tools that you're going to be seeing me use here include this giant glass slab, which has been lightly sanded to make the surface a little bit more abrasive, and also the glass muller, which is the tool that you've been seeing me swirl all over the top of this paint. I'm basically just kind of pressing and pushing this paint in between two slightly abrasive glass surfaces, and that's what disperses the pigment within the binder to create paint. I think it's really important to tell you guys that I am definitely not a master paint maker. I've only been experimenting with this the last couple of months. There are lots of people out there, a few of them fellow YouTube content creators here, who have much more experience with this than I do, and hopefully we can learn and grow in all of this together. I found it kind of difficult to find information on paint making online, because a lot of people are doing this as a profession. So their recipes and ratios are kind of a secret because, you know, it's one of those merchandising trade secret things. But I haven't decided if I'm going to be selling my paints or not. I definitely want to make video content for you guys here. I may eventually sell them because I'm going to continue to make them, so I'm going to have way more than I personally need, so we'll see. But I also want to be completely transparent about this process, so I want to share with you guys the things that I love about making paints, the things that I've learned, where I've had lots and lots of struggles, and I don't really want anything in my process to be a secret. So we can kind of create a base of knowledge so anyone can kind of look back on what I hope will become a series of videos and we can ask each other questions, we can learn from one another, and just kind of demystify this entire process because I know that making paints can seem scary and I don't think it has to seem scary. So now that I'm through my first round of mulling here, I'm going to go ahead and swatch the color. 
Once that swatch is dry, I'm just going to rub it with a clean paper towel to see if any of that pigment comes off. Thanks so much for the tip to Eve Bolt, who has some watercolor making videos links in the place where links go. And if I don't see any pigment rubbing off, that means that all of the pigment has been bound in the binder, which is a very, very good thing. And what I am seeing is a bit of texture in this paint, kind of like granulation. And I am choosing to go ahead and mull this again, just to see if I can kind of lessen that texture a little bit. I suppose that once all of the pigment has been dispersed and you're not having any rubbing off on your paper, you could just stop. There are a couple of different ways to gauge whether or not you've been mulling your paint for long enough, whether you need to add more pigment or more binder, and we'll talk more about that. I'd like to do like a troubleshooting video. So if anybody does decide to make watercolors and you're having issues and you're not sure what the answers to those issues may be, that video might be a good reference point. But I'd like to have a bit more experience and maybe glean a bit more knowledge from other paint makers before I put something like that together. If you guys have any specific questions about making watercolor paints, please do leave them down in the comment section. And if you are a paint maker yourself and you have any answers to questions, feel free to leave those down there as well, if you'd like. I'm really excited about this project, about just kind of building this community database sort of thing where we can just learn together. I'll share my knowledge with you. I find the process to be so relaxing and therapeutic and I really 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 love making paints and I'm excited to get to do that in a content format for you guys and now that all of my videos are being recorded and exported in 4k I'm hoping that we can get some really nice looking paint mulling going on and it's just super super so very exciting. Once I'm satisfied with the paint and I think that it's ready to put into pans, I have this little box thing here with plexiglass on either side and holes in the middle, and this is where I dry my pans. So the paints are covered and they're not going to be getting any dust on them while they're drying, and the holes allow for airflow. This is some buff titanium that I had mulled in a previous batch, and it has dried completely, and you can tell that it shrunk. So this pan was completely full, but it needs to be filled multiple times to actually be full of paint. As this paint dries, the water will evaporate and will be left with the condensed pigment and binder. So even this paint that I'm pouring in now into these pans is going to shrink up considerably and these pans will need to be filled a total of mm, three to five times depending on the pigment to binder ratio. It really does vary a lot from paint to paint. I've had to do a lot of adjusting because each pigment will require a different amount of binder and it also depends on the quality of the pigment itself. This pigment that you're seeing here is Buff Titanium from the company Earth Pigments, and they have some affordable pigments, and some of them are really nice quality. I'm pretty happy with the quality of this Buff Titanium, but if you have a lower quality pigment, basically you're going to use more pigment in relation to your binder, but it also just depends on the color you're using. So for this Buff Titanium, I think I have actually like a one-to-one -one ratio, so the same amount of pigment and binder here, which means that the paint when it's all dry is going to look a little bit drier, a little bit firmer, not quite chalky, but a little bit closer to that, to where other paints, like some blues and reds that I've made, those might be like a seven to one binder to pigment ratio. So you only need like a tiny bit of pigment with some colors and 
trust me, figuring out those ratios was a massive headache because there was somewhere I would start with way more pigment than I needed and I had to keep adding binder and ended up with giant batches of paint, but we will talk about that more in future videos. Please do let me know the specifics of what you guys would like to see with paint making. I'd like this to really be, as I said before, a big community-based project. Once I have scraped all of my paint either into pans that were dry, fresh pans, and then the rest goes into a container with a lid that I can use to refill pans once they're dry in the future, I like to use some of the scrap left behind bits of paint to see how the color mixes with other colors. So this palette that I have here is all handmade paints. I've made all of these colors myself, and I really enjoy filling up my test page with swatches to see how the color mixes with different colors. And because I've made this color before, I don't have any extra notes, but if I was making notes on any additions or changes I was making along the way, that would go on this page as well. These are all of the dried pans that I have made so far. Some of them have been filled multiple times, some of them have only been filled once and need to be filled again, but this is what I've got so far. Some of these colors I really like, some of them I probably won't be making too much again. So let me go ahead and show you the colors that I have in my palette, my personal palette, so far. The first color is the one that you guys have already seen, Buff Titanium. We've talked about that a lot so far. The second color is Nickel Titanium Yellow. This is a really cool milky yellow that I enjoy mixing with reds very much. My warmer yellow is called Permanent Yellow Deep on Kramer's website, which is where I got some of these pigments, lots of them. And my warm red Kramer calls DPP Red, which is PR254, a red pigment that I have come to enjoy very much. My cool red is PV19. It's a Quin Red slash Quin Magenta. I also have a Quinacridone Violet made from PV19. And this Ultramarine Blue, as well as the Thalo Blue next to it, were both pigments that I got from earthpigments.com. And while I do like that website's earthier colors, their actual earth pigments, their primary pigments like this ultramarine and the phthalo blue were a bit more disappointing to me. I wasn't super happy with the pigment strength on these two, so I'm probably going to be replacing them in my palette soon. The next one is cobalt teal as well as phthalo turquoise. Now this phthalo turquoise has probably been the hardest color to make so far. It's a mix of two phthalo pigments and they're kind of a mess to work with, but I do really love this yellow iron oxide. This warm granulating brown earth pigment actually calls this burnt sienna, but it's made from PR102, and I really, really love this Indian red PR101. It's a very, very nice color. It mixes super nicely. My burnt umber here is PBR7, and my colors are kind of out of order in my palette because it's the order that I made them in, so things are kind of all over the place. And this blue is Indian Throne Blue, which is PB60. I've really been enjoying this greenish yellow. It mixes really, really nice warm browns when mixed with some of the reds. The last color in my palette is also a custom mix like the Thalo Turquoise, but this one is a mix of PB60 and PR101, and it gives me this really cool bluish gray, kind of like a Payne's gray, but because it doesn't have PB29, which is French Ultramarine, it doesn't granulate. And I really, really like this color. I like the granulating variety too, but this one is a really nice moody blue gray and I like it a lot. And oh gosh, I really was not paying attention to how that blue was just running away into that violet. So of course the only professional solution is to just cover it up. Does that work? Pro probably, probably doesn't work. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. This was just a brief introduction into my paint making experiences so far. The next paint making video will be a time lapse of a painting that I did with these paints. I was going to include it in this video, but this one just got kind of long, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that separate. Please do leave any questions you have down in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.